Welcome to Central News. Avanti Drome celebrated their grand opening two weeks ago with a record crowd of over 2,000 people. Central News spoke to the home of cycling's Jeff Balm to find out why the Avanti Drome will be such a popular facility. The Avanti Drome will become the National Cycling Centre of Excellence and the home of Bike NZ. It will comprise the second indoor velodrome in New Zealand, so that'll be a 250 metre wooden track indoors. Um, from a scale point of view, it's the size of a rugby field with a roof on. So it's, it's pretty big, but it'll be much more than that. As the home of Bike NZ and the National Cycling Centre of Excellence, uh, 30 to 40 of Bike NZ staff will all centralise to that location and they will run all their programmes, including their elite programmes, right down through their community programmes. And what a lot of people don't understand about Bike NZ, it's easy to see them winning medals on the world stage and think that's all they do. But a third of their business is actually helping people out in the community learn to ride, ride safer, working with local government, working with transit to make the roads much safer. So they, they cover the whole of cycling, not just cycle racing. They also, of course, incorporate the different disciplines of, of cycling. So there's road cycling, track cycling, BMX, mountain biking, and increasingly things such as um, cycle cross and some of the other cycling disciplines. So. Um, those will all happen out of there and, and what will become from an athlete point of view is that effectively they will be, athletes will be centralised to Cambridge, just like rowing is at Karapiro. If you want to row for New Zealand, you pretty much need to get yourself to Cambridge these days and be rowing on Karapiro every day. So if you're going to cycle for New Zealand in the future, then you're going to need to come to Cambridge. Avanti Drome is an interesting name. Where did this come from? Well, of course, the, the velodrome is the fundamental thing. And quite early on, the Avanti Cycle Company, Shepherd Industries, came on board as a major sponsor, and they became our naming rights sponsor. And so um, Avanti mixed with the Drome, we agreed with Avanti that that was a, a wonderful name for a facility. And in New Zealand, Avanti is synonymous with cycling. It's a 30-year-old company. It's a, it's a good news New Zealand story that's competing internationally with the production of bikes and bikes that are winning Olympic medals. So it's a wonderful combination of, um, f for a name for other facility. How is construction coming along since it, be it began in June of this year? Are you on track for the projected completion date in late 2013? We're certainly on track for the projected completion date. Um, one, of the, one of the last bits, but arguably the most important bit is actually putting in the wooden track and that's put in by a, a German, and the timber comes from Siberia, and that's now booked to go in in November 2013. Um, currently, we're, with, with the rain that we've had, we're, we're five or six days behind, but we're confident that we'll catch up that over the summer. This project has a construction price tag of 28.5 million. Where does this funding come from? Um, the, the foundation funder was Sport NZ, so the government, for $7 million. And then we've been able to secure another $7 million of local government funding, and that's $1 million from the Waipa District Council, $6 million from the Waikato Regional Council. So as a regional community facility, the, the whole of the region's paying for it. Um, then we've had a significant amount of gaming trust funds from the likes of the Lion Foundation, New Zealand Community Trust, and then we've been securing commercial sponsorship partnerships on top of that. So right now, um, we have 24 million in the bank, so to speak. We have a loan facility from the Bank of New Zealand, and we have some underwrite facilities. We've we've got the wherewithal to complete the project at 28.5, but we we continue to fundraise because we want to open it at the end of next year without having utilised our loan facility or any of the underwrites. So what are some of the outstanding features that this money will create? Several things. One is that it's a world-class facility and part of the getting the government funding was that it needed to be major event capable and so it needed to be capable of hosting the world championships potentially in the future and that for example requires 4,000 seats. So. The Avani Drome will have 1,500 permanent seats, but we have the ability to take one of the walls off and add another 2,500 seats in the event that we have the world champs, which we certainly hope we would do. Um, 
It's a clear span building, so it's, um, it doesn't have any support structures coming up from the middle of the track to hold the roof up, which a number of other velodromes do. It, it's got the combination of um, the velodrome itself and then a 2,500 2 square metre services office building alongside, which will have a, a gym in it and obviously office space for Bike NZ, High Performance Sport New Zealand and a number of other parties. And then the, the, the other real exciting thing about it is that Bike NZ and High Performance Use will only be about 30% of its available hours and then um, that gives us the real challenge and opportunity of getting a huge amount of community use. So we're spending a lot of time at the moment trying to understand what types of programs will work in the community. We've been looking at what other velodromes around the world are doing, including Invercargill, which is a fantastic model for community engagement. But we've looked at about a dozen velodromes, including um, Manchester and Newport in the UK, which do a really good job. And so we're bringing those learnings to see what sort of community programs we can create. And that's right through from um, adults and kids coming in to have a taster session, say, hey, that's there, I drive past every day, I wonder what it's like to go on a track, right through to um, athletes with disabilities and even people that are um, struggling perhaps to come to terms with um, knee replacement or hip replacement and they're being told, hey, you know, probably best you could do these days for your fitness is cycling. They can even come in and cycle around the apron at the bottom of the track, the flat part of the track. In Invercargill they have five hours of that a week where people come in, some of them are even riding tricycles, adults riding tricycles to go around that track to get their fitness. So it's a facility of national significance but it's going to be hugely valuable to our community. For more information on the Avantidrome visit avantidrome.co.nz And after the break we find out about how the Avantidrome has been funded. Welcome back to Central News. Now that the Avantidrome has officially been opened, the public can enjoy this wonderful facility. A lot of work has gone into funding this multi-million dollar project, and Hillary spoke to Jeff Baum last year about how the public could back the track. You can go to our website, homeofcycling.org.nz, and um, use your credit card or send us a check and fill out the details, $250, and you can own a metre of track. For those who don't know, what is the Avantidrome for? The Avantidrome is going to become the National Cycling Centre of Excellence and it was a key part of a, an idea that says let's get all of Bike NZ and all the cycling sports into this area and then uh, go forward with a high performance program that enables everybody to share each other's ideas, work together, train in one place and it needs to be the hub for uh, road cycling, track cycling, BMX and mountain bike and um, it's going to be a high performance hub with other sports being involved and already the likes of triathlon have confirmed that they'll be coming here and running their high performance program from here as well. How else is the Avantidrome construction being funded? The construction, it's a 28 and a half million dollar project. Seven million is coming from central government. Around seven million is coming from local government, the Waikato Regional Council and Waipa District Council. Uh, a significant amount of money, again another sort of five million or so is coming from some of the major gaming trusts such as Lion Foundation, New Zealand Community Trust, Grassroots Trust, First Sovereign Trust and then the balance is coming from corporate and individual funding through sponsorship, back to track and some other initiatives that we've got underway. How long until she opens her doors? Um, we quietly think that by Christmas we'll sneak a few bikes on the track in that the, the German track builder, he will be here from Labour Weekend and his plan is to be done by the 15th, 15th of December and he tells us that once he's gone, you can ride it. So we're hoping that we'll have some people riding by then. But for the community, for the wider public, it, it'll be probably late February, early March and then we're going to have our official opening at the end of March in conjunction with uh, 2014 Track Cycling Nationals. What are the numbers, you know, how big is the building, how long's the track? Okay, the whole building's about eight and a half thousand square metres of space. The arena area where the track is, that's slightly longer than a rugby field and slightly wider than a rugby field. And then the track itself is 250 metres long, which is the required standard for an international track these days. 
and then adjacent to the arena is a two and a half thousand square metre office building um, over three floors and when we're up and running that'll be housing about 80 people who come to work there each day plus another 80 to 100 athletes who will be coming in there each day and then we'll expect over the course of the day that an average day um, maybe another 250 people will come through the building to enjoy the cafe, uh, go and ride on the track, use the gym and so forth. Now they're using new technology for the roof. Yeah, the roof is a colour steel product from New Zealand Steel and it's called Bounce and it's got some enhanced um, solar reflection type coatings and stuff in it and the idea that it's then better for um, better for insulating the building, keeping the keeping things in and keeping things out. So we're a little bit of a test site. It's a well tested product but it's only just arrived in New Zealand and so they came on board um, seeing it as a high performance product and wanting to be consistent with our high, whole high performance theme. How are you going to make this the centre of performance cycling in New Zealand? Well firstly because we will be the, the home of cycling, the National Cycling Centre of Excellence, then the reality is um, with Bike NZ now going to operate a centralised programme, if you want to cycle for New Zealand in any of the cycling disciplines, you're going to have to get on your bike and come to Cambridge. So it's not dissimilar to rowing now. The reality is with rowing they've got a very successful programme run from Karapiro and if you're a young rower now you know that at some stage you're going to have to get to Karapiro if you aspire to go to the Olympics or to the World Championships. Well, Cycling's going to be that, we'll follow that model and other sports are starting to follow that model as well. What are some of the sports uh, excellence organisations that are coming here? High Performance Sport New Zealand is a key tenant here. They'll, they'll bring a number of service providers who are providing services to a variety of sports, uh, not just cycling and triathlon and rowing, but to other high performance athletes based here in the, in the Waikato area. Um, they will be our largest tenant from a area point of view, but Bike NZ with their head office and their high performance program and their coaches and their community program, they'll be our largest tenant on a per head, on a head count basis. And then we've also got triathlon coming here with half a dozen people. The University of Waikato will be here. We'll have a cafe, a vanti shop, and that will contribute to about 80 people working permanently in the building here. Will beginners be able to use the track as well? Absolutely. Um, Bike NZ will only use about 30% of the track time and so the rest of the track time that's available, um, 60, 70 hours a week, is all available for the community to use and so it's, it provides both a, both a huge opportunity and a wonderful challenge to us to try and create programs and things that will work. And we've been looking at other successful velodromes around the world and saying what's worked for them and what sort of programs can we copy and we're um, about to start rolling those out so people can start lining up. Why do you think Cambridge is, you know, the perfect spot for the centre of cycling? There was a number of reasons. One was the natural attributes that we've got. We already are a strong road cycling area around here uh, with the Te Aumuru track cycling club we've got a strong club um, we're also near Rotorua and the mountain bike services and facilities available in Rotorua are a key part of this between Te Aumuru and Cambridge we've got two very good BMX clubs with very good BMX tracks uh, we're close to the rest of the population for New Zealand we've got the success that rowing's um, brought to the region and of course we've got St Peter's School with uh, its wonderful facilities to support what we're developing and visit advantagerome.co.nz to find out about upcoming events and how you can be involved. After the break, we discover that the Advantage Rome is not only for elite cyclists. Welcome back to Central News. Elite cyclists won't be the only ones visiting the new Avantage Rome, with 65 hours being available for the public to use each week. Anne-Marie recently spoke to Nikki Martin, the Business Development Manager for this world-class facility, to find out exactly what's on offer. Nikki, welcome to Central News. Okay. The Avanti Drome, it really is a facility for everyone, isn't it? Definitely. I mean, that's our mantra. Our mantra we have is no bike, no helmet, no lycra, no problem. No lycra. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> that's no problem. <laughs> Tell me about that mantra. How does it work? 
So one of the big issues that, or one of the big issues people talk to us about is, well, it's a track and we need a track bike. We need a special bike. Um, and they are a special bike to go on the track. You can't turn up with your mountain bike or your road bike. You need to be on a, a specific track bike and they cost a lot of money. So we've gone and ordered 100 community bikes that people can turn up and use our, our bikes. The next thing people say is, well, I don't have a helmet. That's fine because we've got 100 helmets that people can use. And then the next excuse usually is, oh, I don't like wearing Lycra. And that's totally fine. We say there's, if you want to wear Lycra, that's fine. But if you don't want to wear Lycra, that's great. So you could just chin up in shorts and a T-shirt? Shorts and T-shirt. So I rode the velodrome two days ago in denim shorts, Converse shirts, uh, shoes and just a T-shirt and had a ball of a time and it was brilliant. Is there an age requirement? So the minimum age to go on the track is 10, and that's really just a health and safety factor. Um, and kids at that age really are beginning to get a lot stronger and also bike skills as well, just so that they're more stable on a bike. But no, and then we say up to 110. So I've actually got somebody uh, who's booked their 80th birthday party with us later this year, and he actually tried out for the Olympic New Zealand team uh, in his 30s, and he's really keen to get back and have a go on the bike himself. It's fantastic. Yep. You do cater for the under 10s though as well. You've got a mum and tots program. Definitely. It sounds amazing. It is. Well, as a mum myself, I just remember back to those days when my kids were under five and I really wanted to exercise but couldn't because I'd got nowhere for my under fives to go. Um, so what we've actually done again is looked at the barriers. So if you're a mom, dad, aunt, uncle or carer of an under five, you can come into the velodrome. We'll have a pump track or an obstacle course in the infield. So the carer can go and have an hour on the track with the instructor while the under five has their own fun learning really important bike skills on the infield with another instructor. My son's really excited to hear that birthday parties are Definitely. going to be held yeah. at the Avanti Drome. Tell me about that. So again, it's such a great facility for the community that we really want people to be able to use it as widely as possible. And so we're sort of aiming to take on the laser tags and the bowling. It's another idea for a birthday party. So from as little as $15 per person per hour, we can cater for a birthday party as long as they're 10 years old. And they can come on the track for an hour. We provide the bike and the helmet and an instructor. And they have an hour of fun on the track. And then there's two options. They can either go into our function room Rooms and have the birthday party. We can supply the birthday cake and all the food and, and the drink. Otherwise, we have the cafe on site that you could then go into for the rest of the birthday party. Brilliant. It's Nikki. going to be great. It's going to be fantastic. Yeah. Thanks for coming in. Thank you very much. Rushley Buchanan is one of New Zealand's top cyclists and is one of the many elite cyclists who will be using the Avanti Drome as their new training ground. Anne Marie met with her recently to learn more about her career and why she loves this new facility. It's been amazing. We've been able to ride on this velodrome five times a week, you know, be able to just wake up in the morning at home and come over here every day and then go back home. It's really the best prep there has been. Um, yeah, this is a world class facility and it's an honour to be able to train on it every day. Tell me about winning the New Zealand road race for a second time. It was pretty emotional. Um, yeah, to be able to win a New Zealand national title once is an amazing experience. So I was aesthetic to back it up. Uh, it was four years ago my first win so yeah I'm on a different team this year so it means you know it means a lot internationally to be able to wear the silver fern and represent New Zealand every day while I'm training and racing is an honour. Why do you think it was such an emotional experience? Uh, the first time I won in 2010 was more about proving myself as a cyclist and being competitive on the international level. Uh, this time it was more about backing that up and proving to myself that I was still up at that international level and you know still being competitive and just it was more personal on a, on a personal level. You're a member of the United Healthcare Pro cycling team. What does this mean? Uh, so United Healthcare Pro Cycling Team is my international professional road team that I race overseas on and we race internationally all around the world. Uh, they support my track interests and so they're allowing me to stay here and do nationals and then go and do Commonwealth Games. Uh, they're based in North Carolina in the United States and so basically it's like a it's like a professional team and we have team members from all around the world and we all come together and race every weekend in the States or you race different races and yeah it's just a cool thing to be a part of and it's another way of putting my hand up on the international circuit. 
last year saw you on a plane almost every weekend. Tell me about the life of a professional cyclist. Yeah, so in the States, which is where I race most of the time, there's races all the time, every single weekend. So on United Healthcare, we have a team of 12 girls, but mainly six to eight race a weekend. So, you know, it'll be like a selection and, and you can be racing up to every single weekend. How has Bike New Zealand helped you? Um, Biking has been amazing. I've been a part of I don't know, the squad, you could say, for most of my cycling career. Uh, they've supported me since Junior Worlds, so since I was still at school, um, and they gave me guidelines and helped me grow through the sport, and now they're achieving my lifelong dreams. <laughs> Who have your mentors been so far on your journey? Well, I started cycling because I saw Sarah Ulmer in the Olympics on a velodrome like this one. So, you know, at the track nationals next weekend, hopefully if I can inspire one person like she inspired me, that will be, that will be pretty amazing. After the break, see how easy it is to cycle the track. Welcome back to Central News. Programs at the Avanti Drum have been put in place to encourage new riders to experience what track cycling has to offer. Anne-Marie met up with Nikki Martin at the Avanti Drum to try out track cycling for herself. So our mantra is no bike, no helmet, no lycra, no problem. And that really came about because we've got 100 community bikes here that people can come and use to have a go on the track. Um, and then people will turn around and say, well, I don't have a helmet, and that's fine because we've got 100 helmets as well. And then the other people, thing people would say is, well, I don't like wearing lycra. You don't need to wear lycra to come on our track. If you want to, that's great. But if you don't want to wear lycra, that's totally fine as well. So that's where our mantra came from. The have a go sessions are all about just that, aren't they? Having a go. Definitely. A lot of people haven't been on a track bike before or even on a track and especially one that's got steep corners like this one. So we've started up a program which is called Have A Go and that basically gets people on a fixed wheel bike for the first time and we start them off on the flat and by the end of the session we'll get them going onto the track itself. Now Nikki, as a complete track novice, I'm standing here looking at this track, looking at the steepness of it and I can't see myself on there riding confidently in an hour. Of course you can. I hope you've got your kit with you because come on, I'm going to get you on the track now. OK, Nikki, you've cut it, kitted me out. You've got, got me the helmet and the bike. We're ready to go. Now what? Now the fun really starts. So we're going to put you on your fixed wheel bike and we'll start off together. We'll start off on the apron, which is the flat bit. And once I'm happy that you understand the bike, we'll then start going up the track. So put your helmet on and let's go and have some fun. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I'm feeling nervous. Here we go. Come on, let's go ride. Ready? Yep. Let's go. <laughs> Don't stop pedaling. fun I really enjoyed that see it's not that bad after all it is really good fun <laughs> so this time though we're going to have go a little bit faster and we're actually going to get you up onto the timber and onto the track itself as in the steep part yes onto the steep part okay so don't forget speed is your friend so you just need to keep pedaling keep going at a fast pace follow me and we'll get you on that track like a pro okay let's do this come on let's go <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing, absolutely amazing. You need to come and have a go for yourself. Go to the website avantidrome.co.nz. All the details are there. Nikki, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, you've been great. <laughs> and that's Central News for tonight. Make sure you like us on Facebook and let us know if there's news or an event in your community that we can support. Thanks for having us at your place. I'm Wayne Douglas. Kakitano.
This has been an Alpha Media production, a division of Television Media Group. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.